In this video, I'll explain Angular 2 HTTP observables, hopefully in under five minutes. If you'd like to follow along with the code that you see on the screen, please clone this GitHub repo and you can run the code locally. I'll start off by showing you a very basic web page I put together uh, as just an example to use for this video. So I go to localhost and this is a very simple Angular 2 application that uh, makes an API call for some JSON data and shows it in the page. The JSON data I'm getting is comes from this api.myjson.com URL. So here's the actual data and that data translate to the packages that you see here. I'm using system.js uh, system as the loader for this. So the first Ajax spinner is system.js actually loading all the dependencies, which takes about a second or two. And then the second Ajax loader you see is the actual API call. So this is system and then now it's a JSON call and then you see the data. So this is just the example page. We're going to come back to it, but I wanted to explain kind of what happens. And I, if I click refresh data, it makes the JSON API call again. That, that's all. Um, so that's really all that's going on in this page. Now let's take a look at the code. All right, let's take a look at the code. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using system.js as a loader. So the first uh, Ajax spinner that you see when the page loads, that's all these dependencies being loaded. Not much going on there. The real action happens in the package component. So first, let's look at package service. In package service, I create a property called package data. And that package data is of type subject. And the subject is of type array, and the array element types are package. And package is a custom type I created right here. So I'm setting equal to a new behavior subject. And that behavior subject is an array of type package, and it's empty initially. Now, in the load all packages method, I use the HTTP method to get, to make a get request and that get request turn, returns an observable. I map the data that I reserved to some JSON, so create JSON, and we subscribe to that observable. And in our subscription, we say, hey, anytime there's an update, take the data that we got, we want to publish it. And this package data property up here, this observable, has a next method. The next method basically says, hey, anyone who's listening to this data, anyone who has subscribed to this data, here's some new data for you. So just keep in mind that anyone that subscribes to an observable, when you call the next method, they get the data that you're sending to the next method. Let's take a look at where that winds up. So in our packages component, we have a destinations property that's an array of type package, and it's initially set to an empty array. Now, in the on init method, or when the component is initialized, we say this package service, package data, and don't forget package data is created here. It's an observable. We say this package, package service, that package data subscribes. We're subscribing to that observable. And when we get an update from it, we're calling the data that we're getting packages. And once again, we're expecting the type to be an array of type package. We're using a set timeout here, and I'll explain why I'm using a set timeout in a couple of seconds. But first know that when we get an update in our observable, we want to set this.destinations equal to packages. So this.destinations is up here, and we're setting it equal to the data that we get from our subscription. Now, this matters because if you look at the template, in our template, we have this list item, and we're saying let destination of destinations. So the destination is an array. So for each element in the array, here's our template, and we update the UI accordingly. Um, the reason why I'm using a set timeout is because this all happens pretty quickly. It's almost instantaneous, so it's kind of hard to see things happening. So I'm slowing everything down by a second and a half just so it's easier to see. Um, this sort by price method is just a method I created to sort the data by price. It's really not worth going into. It's just that the, so the data is sorted by price and it looks nicer in the UI. But to back thing, just to kind of recap, the main thing to keep in mind is that we're subscribing to an observable that we created in our service. And when that subscription gets an update, we're taking that data, that update, and we're assigning it to the destinations array. So when we look at the web page again 
keep in mind again that the initial AJAX loader is system.js loading dependencies, here it is, and then the second loader is making the actual API call for the JSON data and updating the UI. And if I click refresh data, it just makes the API call again and updates the UI. But these list items here correlate to this LI here in the template. Each one of those list items is a destination of destinations. And destinations comes from the data that we get from our subscription. And that data comes to us because in our service, our package service, we're making an HTTP request and then we're subscribing to it and the data that we get, we're publishing it here in this dot package data dot next. The dot next method says, hey, anyone who's listening, here's some new data for you. And here we are listening and we're getting that data and we're updating updating uh, the UI. There's definitely a lot more to dig into when it comes to observables, but I wanted to kind of give you the quick and dirty of uh, RxJS observables in Angular 2 in five minutes. If you're interested in more Angular tutorials, please visit my blog. And in general, for front-end web development tutorials, please visit kevinchism.com video.